guys have any please. Okay, so before I, uh, I go to the last part, I would like to give you a small exercise to think about. Um, it, it's actually a good exercise if you want to check that you, you, you got an idea of what it is about. So uh, let's, let's take the, just the point. And first exercise, check that there is a, a canonical n plus 1 symplectic structure on the point. So I will hold this on this. So the point is n plus 1 symplectic for any n. And now there's so having an n symplectic structure on x. Just check that this is just completely equivalent to have a Lagrangian structure on the canonical map to the point. Okay. That's, that's something you... And I, I would actually use that fact then a few times. So let me come to... I, I don't know how I should call this thing. Uh, classical or semi-classical field theories. Maybe I should not even go. <laughs> um, and first, I, I want to start talking about. So my TFTs will be just some functors on on the category of probabilism. So let me tell you about the the, the target category. So about Lagrangian like correspondence. Uh, so let's x, y, z be n symplectic stacks. By this I mean that each of them carries a, an n symplectic structure. And let's uh, f and g be some Lagrangian maps. By this I mean um, morphism carrying a Lagrangian structure, and when I put a bar, it just means that I'm taking the opposite uh, symplectic structure on, on this space. So the claim is that uh, if I'm just doing the fiber product of L and M over Y, so this has a map to X cross Z. And this map is Lagrangian. When I say it is Lagrangian, I mean there exists a Lagrangian structure on this map. So let me just give you a, an, a, an idea. Actually, I, I will prove that, that we get some isotropic structure and I, I won't check the, the non degeneracy condition. So here's how it goes. So let me rephrase the fact that we have a Lagrangian structure on F, it just means that, well, F upper star of omega x is actually homotopy to F upper star of omega y. And actually, I will, I will just use a, a slightly different notation. I will, you know, the same way omega x, which is a, a two form on x, and it's pulled back on x plus y, just not to have by x over star of any of you, just to write the limitation. So these are just the forms on, on the app. Uh, the fact that I have a Lagrangian structure on g tells me that uh, g star omega y is homotopy to g star omega z. And now, uh, let me write uh, uh, a nice square. So we have L cross M over Y, then we have a map to L, a map to Y, a map to M, and a map to Y. And this, this is a Cartesian square. And so the, the fact that we have a Cartesian square tells us the following thing, that uh, if I'm just doing <coughs> pulling back over the first projection, Preceded by pulling back on f of omega 
y. This is going to be homotopy to phi m star g star omega y.
Well, but there is another obvious Lagrangian map in G star mod G. So G star mod G is just a shifted cotangent bundle. So you can take the zero section inside, inside T star mod in T star of, of, of BG. So, and it will be Lagrangian. So let's just do the following fiber product. What does this mean concretely? Well, it means that you're firing X with a point over G star, which means that you're taking the zero level set of the, of the moment map, and then you mod that by the symmetry. So that's exactly the reduced space for this moment map. And well, these are two Lagrangian guys in a one symplectic guy. So from what we've seen, is this is just zero symplectic. And uh, well, that, that's a nice interpretation of, of how you, you do symplectic reduction. Like symplectic reduction in the Dirac setting is just derived intersection of Lagrangian structures, and then you get just a um, a shift of the symplectic structure. So G star mod G was one symplectic, we get something zero symplectic. Uh, well, just as a comment, I told you yesterday that uh, when G is a reductive group, that guy is also one symplectic. And you can reinterpret the, the, the quasi Hamiltonian reduction of Alexei Edmonton and Rankin in the, in the very same way. But I won't. I won't say much more. Okay, so now. Uh, so what? Another consequence of the, uh, of the claim is that we get a category and then it's up to you to, to, to think about an infinity category or an ordinary category. Uh, so objects will be uh, n symplectic stacks. So I, I call this category like sub n or like n corresponding this. And uh, morphisms will be just uh, so a morphism from let's say from, from x so home from x to y in like n it will just be uh, well So let me say, so it will be Lagrangian correspondences. So either you take just the, the set of Lagrangian correspondences up to weak equivalence, because we have a notion of weak equivalence on, on those derived stacks equipped with the Lagrangian structure, or you're happy with, with working with higher categories and you just take the space of those things and that, 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 that makes for you an a, a infinity one category. Okay, uh, but well, to actually define carefully the infinity one category, there, there is some work to do, but that's that. This is getting this. Okay, so that's for our, our target category for our topological field theories. So that, that's why I call them classical or some like, yes, sorry, I missed the, 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 the work to do is to define the space structure in, in that space? Is the, the no, 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 the, no, no. It, the, point, the point is, is that if, even if you define this as a space, that, that's, that's okay. But composition is not going to be uh, associated on the nose. So you have to work with some, either some single category, that's what I, I, I would do, but you can also work with body category. But, but just working with topological category or simple category would not be okay here. Right, so well, the reason why I'm calling this TFT classical or semi-classical TFT is that just that my target category is not some category of vector space or something like that. It's just it's just of classical nature, just because I have symplectic and Lagrangian guys. Yeah. But that's the only thing. Okay, so let's now talk about uh, transgression, which will be the way to build these these, these TFTs. And uh, when I say transgression, I, I really mean that actually this is the AKZ or PTV. 
Well, for a smooth projective variety, the data of the orientation will more or less coincide with the data of, well, with a, with a, a non, an over vanishing uh, top degree uh, form. Uh, so it will be just Calabria condition. Okay. So, just this thing, example of this thing are just uh, the orientation, usual orientation on compact manifolds or being detailed for, for, for smooth predictive variety of the energy. So let me just uh, give you then the, the construction I want to make using this, uh, these gadgets. So, Let's take sigma being all compact and deoriented. Uh, and let's just take x to be n symplectic. So then we have a, an evaluation map from sigma across the mapping space from sigma to x to x and let me call this f so that's the evaluation map so now I can pull back uh, the, my symplectic form on x to the, via the evaluation map and I can just integrate along the fundamental class of sigma so I have to tell you what, what this means So integration along the fundamental class of sigma, it's a map which goes from closed form on sigma cross, uh, cross y for any y. And then you first use the O compactness property to go to gamma tensor this. And then you use the fundamental class to go to just k. So in the end, it's just uh, a p closed so y. Oh, I should put some degree n here, and then this is just n shifted by minus d here. Yes. Can I say that I'm intuition as to why why they buy in the integration these two steps? Something compact for me, something that I can push forward forms. It forms by the projection to forms and y. Why do I keep the functions on x and then later I integrate those out? So, sorry, can you say it again? So for me, something compact is something that I can push for, push down forms yes. from x cross y to x to y, and I don't see why I should keep the functions on x. And then you're later integrating those those on x by the fundamental class on x. No, I mean that's not what I mean. Something which is which is project. I mean, which is proper in algebraic geometry is not what you're saying. It's not about integrating forms. So think about, so if sigma is, 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 if your stack x is the, the homotopy type, it's a homotopy type, let's say it's, it's a sigma b, you have to think about all sigma b as the cochains on the, on the space sigma. So your ring, ring of function is the cochains. So, is it convincing then? Okay. Um, right, so so then the claim is the following. Uh, well, actually, it's, it's a theorem. Uh, it just says that. Um, the mapping stack sigma from sigma to x with this guy is n minus d So that I mean, actually, this already tells you that that you have a close n minus d four, uh, well, a uh, close to form of degree n minus d. The hard thing to prove is, is actually to prove that it's non-degenerate. 
Um, well, I should say that actually for this to make sense, you have to assume that the mapping stack satisfies some nice condition. I mean, it's, uh, it's acting and, and, uh, and locally affine representation. But for the two examples of sigma I gave, there, there are some representability theorem uh, by Yogi, I think, which tells you that it is indeed uh, the case. So that's fine. Okay, so when, when did we start actually? I started quarter to. Okay. Let me give a bunch of examples. Uh, okay, so let's take uh, sigma to be the Betty stack of a closed oriented D manifold. And let's take X being VG, which we know to be uh, too symplectic, then uh, map from sigma, uh, let me give a name to this manifold, to VG. It's the moduli stack of local systems on M, and this is N minus uh, D minus two symplectic. In particular, if you have a closed oriented surface, you recover that, uh, uh, I mean, the moduli stack of, of geolocal systems on the surface is, is symplectic. So, well, you recover. Actually, I should say that, well, this is a derived stack, but there, it, it has an open substack which is actually smooth and which is what people usually call the, the, the moduli space of local systems. Of all compact 
that. And uh, assume that tau is zero oriented. So I have a fundamental class. And I have to find some kind of, if you want, some relative uh, orientation, or I, I just call it boundary structure, but I mean the name is probably not so well chosen. So what I call a boundary structure on F uh, is a class or a homotopy structure. Uh, between the push forward of the fundamental class and zero. So it's a neural homotopy for the push forward of the fundamental class along this map. Which Uh, well, I have to tell you in each space, in which space, so in, uh, in the space of maps from Okay. 
I have a map from tau to sigma, so, well, map, the, the underlying map is just contravariant, so that's, that's it. I just don't want to call it f star because f star is pulling back up form, so. Uh, okay. Uh, now we have the following commuting diagram. Like this. So we first have tau cross map from uh, sigma to y. And there are two ways to go to y from this guy. First, you can map tau to sigma. And then evaluate on sigma. So this I will, even though I mean the map f is from tau to sigma, but let me not write f cross identity still write f for this map. And here we have again, I mean I should write identity cross a restriction, but let me still write restriction for this map. And I have it goes to tau cross the mapping stack from tau to y. And here I have the evaluation on tau. Okay. So
with, with some non-degeneracy conditions. So some, for every perfect complex, there is this non-degeneracy condition. I'm not going to write it in the relative context, so let me say that uh, if one assumes that the boundary structure on F is non-degenerate, and really non-degenerate is just a translation in this language of relative uh, functionality. But it will take some time to. I mean, it, it, it looks very much like the, the, the non degeneracy condition for Lagrangian. So if we have this, and omega is an n symplectic form on y, then we get a Lagrangian structure. on a uh, map from sigma to y to map from tau to y. So let me give, give some examples of, of where so we get some interesting results from that. Uh, So let tau be just um, okay. The basis stack of M where M is a closed oriented surface and sigma is the basis stack of N where N is a three manifold. And the boundary of n is n. Okay, it's or oriented to my focus boundary being n. Well, then we have the following. So we have map from sigma, let's say to B G, which is not nothing but local, G local systems on n. And then we have a map to map from tau to B G which is nothing but G-local systems on M. So we know that that guy here is zero symplectic. And now this line is Lagrangian. So if you restrict to the smooth locus again, in the smooth locus here you have just the, the, the moduli space of, of G-local system on M. And here you will have inside uh, those local systems that extend to M. And that's, I mean, usually that's known that this is Lagrangian actually in, the, uh, in, in G local system in M. So that's, that's kind of a, another way to, to, to prove this. So let me give you another example from algebraic geometry. Well, the, the, so the version will be G bundles. So basically, here, really. The, the, the fact that we have a boundary structure comes from the uh, just the inclusion of the boundary. I mean that's where the, the, the name comes from. And the non-degeneracy condition is relative point connectivity. Another example would be tau being a K3 surface. So this is a two oriented in the sense of we, we had before. Because it's two categorical. And let's take uh, sigma to be a uh, final threefold. Um, yeah, let's forget about this if you, if you don't know this. The, 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 the very important point is that so now we have tau inside sigma. So tau is a divisor in sigma. And we want the class of this divisor to be the anti-canonical class, namely the opposite of the class of the canonical bundle. Mm -hmm. 
and everybody is projected here. And well, you have to write things carefully, but actually that's, that gives an example of a boundary structure which is non-degenerate. It's a kind of homomorphic version, if you want, of it's a, it's a relative self-reality, if you want, to get here. So then, well, we just write these, these two mapping stacks. So the first one is just G bundles on our fund of three volts. And the other one is going to be G bundles on our k surface, so we know that on the, on the right side this is here to like And now we just find that this is like Lagrangian map. And there is a very nice paper of Turing where he... I mean, he spent quite some time just finding the appropriate smooth locus of that guy inside that guy, and he, he kind of, he has a statement saying, well, it's Lagrangian kind of formally, but, well, this is really a place where derived geometry just tells you, oh, actually, let's not care, let us care about all that, that smoothness problems, and let's say, well, that's just, that's just a Lagrangian map. Okay, so, uh, well, after this, this kind of geometric examples, let me just go to the TFT stuff. Now we have everything that we want to produce a factor from D block to, uh, uh, to our Lagrangian correspondences. So let's so let's assume that we got X some n symplectic stack. And uh, we can produce a functor from Oriented decomposition to this category like so we have to be careful about the, the index so it could be n plus one minus d so it sends um, a d minus one dimensional closed oriented uh, manifold to of oh, this mapping stack, so the Betty stack, to map from the Betty stack to X. So this will be N minus D plus 1 symplectic. And it will send any coborism, so if you have, um, let's say, some sigma, of dimension D, which is a coordination between tau plus and tau minus. What does it give to you? It gives the following thing. So you have upstairs the mapping stack from the bit stack of sigma to x. And you have a map to the mapping stack from the bit stack of the disjoint union of those two guys. And you have to care about orientation. So you have actually use the reverse orientation here. So it would be just, well, if you take maps from a disjoint union, it would be product of maps. So here you have map from tau plus beti to x cross map to minus beti to x. And, well, I think you, you will trust me if I tell you that if you take the opposite orientation here, then you actually get the opposite symplectic structure there. And that's that's okay. And this map is Lagrangian. So we really get a functor from uh, oriented coborisms to Lagrangian correspondences. Uh, maybe I, I have time to discuss some. Well, okay, that's basically all I, I, I wanted to tell you in these lectures. Maybe I, I, I want to make a comment of about why I was kind of trying to do this and uh, what I would like to do with this. The, uh, there, there are two main, I mean, there are two main applications I have in mind. So one is kind of a bit vague. There is this uh, this series of paper I think by Capustin and Saulina, 
where they try to understand the boundary conditions in classical field theories. And I, kind of, I mean, they, they come up with some higher categories where they intersect Lagrangians, but well, when, when intersection are not transverse, they have difficulties and whatsoever. But I mean, they, they set up with this as an embedded in BV, and people in BV know that the boundary conditions are Lagrangian. Yeah, so I think that's just, I mean, that's just, I mean, I, I'm not saying that it, it gives anything new, but it, it might just help to clarify that the, the stuff they are doing. I don't know. But that, that's one of the things was I, I wanted to understand their paper, so. The, the other thing which is, I think, uh, uh, probably even, uh, it, it's, it's more serious, is there is, um, there is a topological field theorem which is uh, not exactly constructed, I mean, which is conjectured by Numa Tashikawa. They, they have these uh, TFTs, so they, 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 they guess that there should be a TFT, a two-dimensional TFT with values in homomorphic symplectic manifold. And here is how it goes. They say, well, let me just describe the target category. So they say that the target category objects are actually groups, D groups. So it, it's something that goes from two pop oriented to some category C. And I mean, they, they come up to this, I mean, for those who know, with some consideration about what they call the theories of class S. And I must say that I don't understand how they go from the physics to this, but then they guess that there should be some two dimensional TFT like this, and they say, well, we don't know exactly how to construct it, and we'd like to. That's something, uh, uh, actually, Tashiko even said, he, he writes, we urge mathematicians to construct. Seriously, so rigorous with this field theory. So that's that, that's one that might be one observation. So this C is as follows. So objects are basically Li or algebraic groups, and morphisms are well holomorphic or algebra. Actually, all all the holomorphic guys we got here are. are Symplectic manifolds, but I should say it's a morphism from one group to another, so it's a holomorphic symplectic manifold together with a moment map like this. And basically, the composition is something like uh, you're going to, so if you have x going from g1 to g2, well, these are the Li algebra of the corresponding group. So x carries an action of g1 cross g2, and this action is Hamiltonian. And you have a y, let's say, which carries an action of g2 cross g3, which is Hamiltonian. How would they, how would they make the composition? Basically, by doing reduction for the middle gap, right? And, well, my guess here is that if you reinterpret um, symplectic reduction just like as intersection of, of, of Lagrangian structures, what they are considering is something of this sort. It's actually, so what, what I'm saying is that you can embed their category in the category of Lagrangian correspondences. And I think this category of Lagrangian correspondence is a better recipe for, I mean, it is a better target for this, 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 uh, this TFT because I think we can obtain them as a mapping space. So let's say there's a map from C to lag 1, where you send your group G well, to uh, G star mod G. And you send your x, which which has a moment map to g plus g to star, like this. Well, you send this to x mod g to g one star mod or g one cross g two star mod g two. So there, 
the, the, their target category actually kind of embed in this category of like ranging for and composition is okay, right? Yeah, so composition is exactly the, the yeah. Fiber, I, I explained that fiber product is exactly symplectic prediction, so that's that's what going to happen here. Okay, I think I, 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 that's all right. Okay. Questions. Your example that you just removed from this board. Yeah. I'm very confused with the numbers there. Just take uh, take a P3. Yes. And take a quartz in, in, in P3. Yeah. So this bundles, um, and G is going to be GL2. So this is the nice result. Okay. Bundles of P3, this is a 90 dimensional simple Okay. But it seems to me that 90 bundles of P3 has a dimension much less than 45, is it? <laughs> So, so, but no, no, but I want, I mean, your case was a zero to black in so I wonder if, yeah. if there's some trick in the, what Lagrangian means. Is it an honest Lagrangian instead of this honest simplex in many quotes? No, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, but there, I mean, according to what Turing writes in his paper, there should be a smooth locker score, everything boils down to actual simplex. Okay, so I expect then that run two vector bundles on P3 should be of dimension 45. Okay. This is, okay, so you see okay. this, 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 I spent the last 10 minutes trying to compute this and I was getting number no, much more. This is where it's tricky, when you talk about the smooth locus, actually, you have to check the subspace. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I might not this complete. It's, it might not be, I mean, uh, vector, I mean, those vector bottle on, on P3, but it might more be those guys on, on, the K, on, 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 on your K3 that extends to, I mean, that, which, I don't know if this is slightly different or not, but, uh, but it's a device, But he proved that it's like that. I mean, there is an open... Yeah, he has a kind of formal proof. I, I never completely checked his proof. Yeah, the very first thing you would do is compute the dimension. So I suppose if there's a proof of this statement that is an honest Lagrangian dimension 45. Okay. So actually, he has some condition on H2. I mean, he, he put some condition to... Yeah, yeah, I mean, because otherwise you don't get semi-stable and uh, yeah, right, some conditions. Yeah. But it's just like going to go into Yeah, it's just like going to SL2 instead of getting to solve that. Any other questions? I have a suggestion. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, basically, if you want to imitate what physicists are doing, you have to start try to study high-dimensional TFT. So for physicists, it's six dimension. I mean, basically, this S type of theory, etc. And then many effects are basically gotten by reduction, you know, either this way, that way, etc. So presumably, if you try to repeat the same thing in your framework, then you know, I mean, you may understand some statements. But I mean, that's basically. I mean, in a way, everything should come just you know from one six yeah. theory. Yeah, but I think this six dimensional theory is neither topological nor conformal. Uh, which one? I mean, in physics, yeah, it's a con it's a super conformal okay. theory, and this is very unique. I mean, it's due to abstract reasons it exists, but nobody can write a Lagrange, and I mean, nobody I mean, there are fundamental issues. But people believe it's in existence, yeah. okay. and the fact that it exists implies a lot of stuff. Okay. So in a, in, a, in a way, a lot of relation between 2D theories and 4D comes exactly from the fact that either you reduce one way, you get something 4D, another way 2D, and then they should be related, and here you come. Yeah, I'm aware of that stuff, but I was never able to understand what, even what, what, how this prediction goes, for example. I mean, that right, but in a way, you can forget about this. You can try to develop, I mean, similar framework, right? I mean, in a way, you understand if you have a 6D, you yeah. can reduce it in some your proper way. Yes. I mean, to large dimensional theories, and they should be related. Okay. Right. And what should we read about that? Well, you mean in understandable terms for 60, you? 60. About 60. Yeah, the most. Uh, yes. I don't know. I mean, no, there is a huge literature. The main problem that, I mean, it's a physics literature, so I don't know. I heard that Yeah, I mean, you know, there are a huge amount of people trying to understand. But that. actually, I would say that Tashikawa has, a, he has some personal objection on something. Well, what the, I, I know, for example, there are coming some, uh, you know, review lectures with stationary editor. 
So I think these lectures you are referring to Shikhar, he's writing, I think, for this. So oh, okay. guys, you know, Google or with other people, I mean, they're trying to collect Thanks. some. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think he will be the editor of these collections, both trying to. But I don't know, I mean, it, it depends. If you'll maybe look at some talks by Greg Moore at some month, okay. it may be a good summary, but I don't know. I mean, the literature is huge, but the question of translation, right? You don't want to be lost in translation. <laughs> But I don't know, I think maybe in a way not try to read physicists, but just, you know, philosophically to repeat the same thing. I mean, try to understand, I mean, how these reductions of, you know, high dimensional TFTs to large dimensional TFTs will work in your framework. I mean, and I mean, you should get something consistent in some way, right? I mean, presumably. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Okay, let's, thanks for nice lecture. Meet at one. Uh, sorry, two thirty. And if anybody knows who Andre.